Mistakes are really important. Mistakes are really valuable. If you live your life trying to run away from the mistakes that you make, you will never learn anything and you'll just play it safe and you'll never do anything risky. That's the kind of person who doesn't ever make mistakes. People who never take risks. It's a boring life and it's a life which doesn't achieve very much. Okay? So it's important that you give things a shot and get them wrong and you learn something from them. Okay? Let's have a look at 7 minus 5x equals 8. Um, what might be a step that we could do first that would help here? Any suggestions? Uh, yeah, do you go ahead? Okay, all right. I think, I think getting rid of this 7 is a great idea, right? I'm going to write this down in a second. Maybe you want to follow along with me and compare your working with mine. I am going to say it a little bit of a different way though, right? I'm going to, and I'm going to encourage you to think about it this way as well. Rather than thinking about moving this guy over, being that this is an equation, right? This is a statement that says this thing and this thing are the same. They're equal, they're identical, they have the same value, okay? Being that you've got that picture in your head, you should think about doing the same thing to both sides because they're both the same, right? Try to think less about like moving things here and there and it's very confusing and you can end up with something wrong and you don't know why, okay? So instead of saying, I'm gonna take the seven to the other side, I'm going to subtract seven from both sides and that'll get me somewhere, okay? So just follow along with me, I'll do it over here. Over on the left, I'll get negative five X and on the right, I'll get a minus 7, which is 1. Okay, so I think we're comfortable with that. All right, now pause. At this point, you can probably say, all right, now I see something's gone wrong. What should I do now to actually get x by itself? Take one one. Minus five yeah, good. Okay, now, Divide instead of five taking five. minus 5 to the other side, what's the actual operation that Divide I'm doing? It. Yeah, very good. So I want division to get from this side to the next, right? In fact, I'll even write it here. Uh, oops, sorry, I didn't do that yet. Like so, so I've divided both by negative five. And this is exactly what I mean by, okay, rather than saying I'll take it to the other side, which kind of sounds the same for both these operations, I'm doing a different thing here than a different thing than the here. Does that make sense? Like when the five goes over, like does it become a plus or a minus? You can see this is a really easy mistake to make. I've made this mistake before, okay? But now we know where it came from. Cancel, cancel, x equals, now one divided by minus five, that is the answer, but we tend to put the negatives either on the top or kind of like in the middle. Like that. Okay. It doesn't matter where um, it is. It does not really matter whether it's here or there. It's a bit awkward to divide by negative numbers because when I think about like when I think about a number like this, that was that was this one here, right? Okay, I've got an I've got three things and then I want to share it to four people. That kind of makes sense. So you each get three quarters of a piece. But when I think, oh, I've got one thing and I want to share it to negative five people, it's like, yeah, yeah. You might not have any friends, but you don't need to say you have like negative friends, right? So, so therefore, putting the number, negative putting the negative friends. on the, yeah, I have negative friends. I'm so popular, guys. Um, putting the negative on the top, that kind of makes sense, because then it's like, I have, I've lost something and that's what I need to share out. Or alternatively, putting it here, because it's like an operation that applies to the whole number. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm so glad we had that discussion. Um, this one is missing. I don't want to know what the answer is. I just want to know who attempted it. Hands up. Keep your hand up if you have an answer. Keep your hand up if you think you're reasonably confident you have the answer is right. Okay, hands down. <laughs> Next time, you 10 people should have come to the board and written this down. Okay, now a lot of people didn't write it. So let's have a crack and I'll do it. I'm really supposed to save this for something else. So write this heading after we're done here, but I'm going to do the working for that question over here. Okay. Now, admittedly, like I said, it's a bit of a curveball, so I understand people being a bit reluctant to get up and do this. We've been saying this whole time, like over here and stuff like that, where you can, you should avoid a fraction. I take it that's why most of you said, uh, for here the first step was probably take away seven, right? That makes sense. If you divide by five, you get fractions everywhere, okay? So, thumbs up. However, here, you're kind of stuck because I just handed you a fraction right from the get-go, right? So, being that there's a fraction already there, is there any way that I can get rid of it? Okay, number one, I could change it to 0 0.5, and that would be fine, and then I could like subtract and add and all that kind of thing. And that's, that's fine. In fact, I'm gonna do the working for that in a second. But there's another way I can actually just like 0 0.5 is just another way of writing a half. It's still the same number. Can I change it actually in any way that I don't have to deal with fractions or decimals at all? Any takers? Yeah, yes. Good. I've got a half there. 
If I multiply everything by 2, which is fine, this is an equation, remember, it's balanced. If I do something on the left and the right, everything comes out in the wash. This fraction will go, okay? So I'm going to take this, and uh, I mean, if you've got this written down somewhere, I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to put brackets around this. This is my bracket language I use for shorthand. I'm going to put 2 in the front, and then I'm going to multiply this guy by 2. So I've multiplied both sides by 2. Once you've done that, like this is expanding brackets, you've done this loads, right? You just take each of those, multiply them by two. So what's on my left hand side? Ax plus four, don't forget both of them. And then two halves better be one, right? Now that there, I've taken a problem which we weren't very confident with, and we're like, uh, a bit iffy about it. And I've turned it into this, and you guys have seen dozens of these problems, we're pretty good at them. So now let's go ahead and solve it. What should I do now? I should subtract 4 from both sides. 1 take away 4 is going to be negative three. negative 3. And my last step is, I can't avoid the fraction now, I should divide, divide by 8. Divide by eight right? Divide by 8. So that will give me just x by itself over there and minus 3 over 8. Are you happy? Yeah, should we ever put it into a decimal? Okay, so let's talk about, um, let's talk now about like, how should I write my answer? Because this comes up for a question like, this, that's minus 0 0.375, I think. Yes. Uh, it comes up for a question like this, and yes, that is a 3. It's just a small 3. Okay, the question came up to me like, oh, which one should I put as the answer? Should I put that, or should I put a decimal? Should I put a, what do we call these? What are, they've got different names. This is an improper fraction, and this is a mixed numeral, because we mix together a whole number and a, and a fraction. Okay, um, which do you put? now? Just mark the words on this, right? For question one, it doesn't matter. You can put either four. They're the same number. Now, you might have heard in the past, hey, you should really make sure you put it in this form. Or you've heard some other people say, hey, you should really put it in this form, right? And some of you are like, well, which one should I do? Okay. If all you want is a value, because they're the same number, that's why it's fine, okay? However, there are some circumstances where this is kind of more helpful or useful to us than this, okay? For example, if I ask you to do a graph, right? In fact, we'll do this when we get to, um, you know how we're doing a of one at the moment, and then it's a of two, and a of three, and the HSCE will get to a of four and five. In a of four, we have to look at a lot of straight lines, things like this, okay? And you have to like read them, you have to interpret, and so on. I suppose I wanted you to find out what this number was, and the answer you got back was, 19 over 3, okay? Now you want to know accurately where you should put this thing and you've got like a scale and you think, okay, well there's you know all these different numbers labeling here. I have no idea where 19 over 3 is. I don't memorize things in thirds. Right? Whereas when I see 6 and a third, oh, it's kind of between 6 and 7 and closer to the 6. Like I have a handle on where that's supposed to be, right? So that's why this form of number kind of makes more sense if you try to do something like this. So you know how we see the word like simplify? You see it a lot in maths, right? Simplifying depends on like what's simpler depends on what you're gonna do later with that number. Like that number's gonna go somewhere. You might have to do something with it. And different things, different purposes will suit different numbers. Okay? When we get to the next um, when we get to the exercise, I'll show you sometimes when. Actually, you know what? This kind of is a bit of a pain. Don't do it like that. It's just gonna be a hassle for you. You might as well leave it like this. Okay? So some of you were having a we're bickering about this before. There's no clear winner in this case. Because remember how I said like the number's going somewhere? This number's not going anywhere. So we don't know what you want to use it for. So we don't know which form is best. Okay? So therefore, any form is fine. Does that make sense? Yeah. For, um, <coughs> for this one here, um, minus 3 over 8, can we simplify it to minus 1.5 over 4? Okay, that's a good question. So um, I'll come back to this one to illustrate the answer to this. Okay? Um, remember I said either of these are fine? Either of these are fine. I'll tell you what's not fine. Uh, I'll take it from here. Nineteen over three and thirty-eight over six. Those are two fractions that have the same value. Okay? But thirty-eight over six is not okay. Why not? Not yeah, it's not, I can do better than that, right? Once you get to 19 over 3, that's kind of as far as you can go. 19 is we call the prime number, so you can't divide it by anything except for 19 uh, and 1. So therefore, that's clearly, this is clearly a step backwards, right? This is not as good. Okay? In the same way, when we're having a look at this number here, 
Um, if I had written instead minus 1.5 over 4, okay? It's like, well, we've got fractions, but we also have a decimal flying around. Like, why would you do that? You're just kind of making it more awkward. Whereas these are all whole numbers. That's kind of the best I can do, being that I have a fraction there. So I would leave it like this. And I don't think there's any clear benefit to changing this one. Okay. Now, just before I leave this question, the last thing that got asked and I didn't answer it was, can I leave my answer as this? Can I do that? Is that better? What do you reckon? Mm -hmm. who, who, who prefers this? Oh, you prefer it? Yeah, a few people prefer it, and that's fine. The answer I'm going to give is, again, it depends on where you're going. Right? Like, what is this number going to be used for? Um, if you're trying to do like a blood alcohol limit or something like that, that's a really bad. I think you're dead if you have that blood alcohol. <laughs> um, but if, you, Wait, if you're doing negative. that, then those numbers are. Three, seven, oh yeah, it's like yeah, someone sucked all the alcohol out of my body. Anyway, <laughs> um, the point is that those numbers are always given as decimals, right? So therefore, it makes sense to provide answers also in decimals. Um, I'm just trying to think of other things. We were looking at the child's dosage of medicine before. Also in decimals. Like who measures, oh yeah, I'm going to have three and a fifth of a mil. No one does that, right? So therefore, that kind of makes sense. Again, based on the context. I'm going to ask this question again. You're going to get sick of me asking it. What are you using the number for? Then you'll know how to provide it. Right. Um, that was, that there was our answer for this. And x equals 2 is fine. Some people, um, who looked at this and didn't know what to do? Didn't know where to start? Yeah. Yeah. That's again, let me quickly show you, right? Again, what we're trying to do is get the x, get the pronomial by himself, okay? Now, most people probably realize, all right, I should get that 12 over the other side, he's in the way. But then, what do I do with this x? Someone, a lot of you didn't have your hands up, so you knew what to do. What would you do with this x? You just yeah, it. Eliza? Like, yeah, I, I'm going to, now, again, language, language, right? I am gonna take it to the other side, but what am I doing to get it to the other side? I'm going to my, I'm going to subtract x from both sides, right? So if I subtract an x from both sides, that's why it leaves you with six over here. No x is over here because I've taken that away. And when you add twelve to both sides, there you go. And you can see where x equals two comes from. Are you happy with that? Uh, I get it. Yeah. I the opposite way. Yeah, same. yeah. How did you do it? Did you take the seven yeah. x? Okay, so you subtract the seven x, and that's fine. Uh, in some ways, it's like okay. Uh, that way you don't have to move this guy anywhere. Um, but I guess we generally put this on the left. So that's the only reason why I did it that way. 